first you very, very strong parallel between France and what we're trying to do. Because if you think about it, you know, through its history, you know, France has been very cultural, right? With their uh, assimil I mean, assimilation policy, even on the continent. Um, they, they've been very, very cultural, and, this, and uh, the state has tried to preserve, you know, and, you know, preserve and um, be the, the fulcrum of that advantage which the French have. You know, they talk about their, 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 their cuisine, they talk about, you know, you know, their culinary, you know, finesse, and all the things French, you understand? And the state has tried to. And, in, and you know, we see the same similarity in Edo. Because you come in, everything about us is just, you know, it's all culture. The way, you know, the wife, you know, celebrates the, you know, the, uh, celebrates at meal times. you know. You know, you just don't serve your husband food like that. There are songs and drama that goes with it. <laughs> so, <laughs> you get it. But that's, uh, that's us, I mean. So, so it's like, okay, um, that's one huge advantage we have. So why can't we, as part of our government offering, acknowledge it and begin to support it? Isn't it? Because it's one advantage we have. And the world can now come just like, oh, everybody wants to go to France and talk, you know, speak, you know, throw in French words in, you know, in certain, you know, behaviors or in certain instances. So why can't we do the same? Because it's something we have. You, you get it. I mean, and it's authentic. It's unique to us. Not very many people have it. So it's got to. But what I found as governor is that culture was just nowhere. We assumed that we talked about it, but you can't find it in any state system. Culture is supposed to be on the concurrent list, but there are no laws, even locally, on culture, on anything. Culture. You, you, you get, because we just, you know, you, you know how it is. We just, we assume it's there, and so there's no deliberate plan, policy, or, you know, to make sure it's on trend. And that's what we're trying to do in Edo, to first, first highlight it. The second is the issue of markets. Lagos is the market. Of course, Lagos is the seventh or sixth largest economy in Africa. You know, it has 20 million people. I have only five. After Lagos, what next? By the way, quite a lot of the creative um, creatives you find in Lagos came from outside of Lagos. So it's like, so, and who says there are not many more where they come from? And we know that we host quite a lot. So why can't we, as a deliberate policy, make sure we capture many, many more who may not want to come to Lagos? So I, I think for us, the, 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 the strategy is to make sure that we're able to develop a do as a hub for production, make it easy for producers to come and work there. It's, you know, make sure it's more convenient, it's more cost effective. And how do we do that? What do you need as a producer? You need talent, right? You need to be able to manage your costs. So when you come to Edo, you know, we working with Edo Jobs, we're, we're training people across the spectrum as cinematographers, as sound engineers, at state, you know, you know, all sub aspects of production. So that you can, at the click of a hand, you find somebody who is experienced, who is talented enough to support your work. We're also investing in technology. So you, when you want to stream your content, you're not looking for some 4G or 5G or something. You actually are connected on high-speed internet. You go to Savix or Wifo Hope, for instance, the light there does not blink. It's 24-7 electricity because we have a dedicated IPP an independent power facility that supplies this electricity into that facility or anything else, or anywhere else. So, so, so what we're doing strategically is to focus on those areas that will make it easier for producers to come and produce their, uh, their um, products, their you know, productions in Edo. From what I see today, I mean, with the 
with the way our economy is going, with the exchange rates the way they are going, if we just organize this industry well, I mean, this is something we're already exporting across the continent and across the world. You know, every time you watch a movie from Nigeria or Netflix or something, you drop something, you drop at me. Yes. And that thing that drop is not, it's not meaningful. <laughs> Even if it is one dollar, how much is that now? <laughs> and you, you, you get it. So it's so important because the economics may begin to make sense. And so how do we support the growth of that industry? It has to be deliberate. And that's where we come in to say, as state, our role is to help incubate something. Because the private sector investor is always looking at, OK, and they are short term because they have to report to their shareholders at the next AGM, right? But as a government, I am not looking at the next AGM. I'm looking at the next generation. So my horizon should be longer in terms of how I invest taxpayers' money. I can't be looking at returns the way a private business person is. Otherwise, I'll not invest in education now. Huh? The children will go to school. Because how I'll spend one year, six years before I even know whether they'll finish primary school. Then after that, another six years before, you know, about this investment will pay now. So I won't do it. <laughs> but government cannot see investment that way. We've got to say, listen, it's like if we don't do it, who will? Right. So that's the approach we've taken. Returns on investments. Does it make sense? Um, and in themselves, you know, I mean, for young struggling artists, it takes a while to make their name, you know, before you can begin to see real returns. And that's where we've come in to say, look, how can governments support, you know, budding artists? You know, you don't have the magic jacks, you don't, you can't, you don't have all the things you need to. I said, okay, you know what? Let's invest in this, right? So that people can come and share time, share space, clean up their production. So, and depending on what the manager says, maybe you can come in at some on, on holy hours and you want to do a three to seven slot in the morning. It will be cheaper for you at that time than somebody wants to do a seven to you know, 12 slots, for instance. But at least the facility is there. I mean, it's, it's affordable and all sorts of arrangements can be put in place so that you can you don't you don't you know if you have a production and it doesn't go well you're not totally down and out and then go and start to look for uh, restaurants or dish cleaning jobs after <laughs> you're right you can still so so that's the first thing too how do you support the industry the the, the second bit is you know, we just look at the cost structure of productions. Where is most of the money spent? Right? It's in the logistics. You know, accommodating your crew, accommodating your cast, moving equipment. So what we've done is to say, okay, you know, we understand that. Let's create a JV with the industry. Right? We are not, we are government. Where there's a guy... There's a, like a joint venture arrangement where when you come in, you register and say, I'm going to tell me, um, X, XYZ Studios, how many productions do you think you're going to do this year? Fine. So, okay, let's book. When are you likely to? What's your budget? Where's your money? Okay. What are the chances? Okay. So, you want 20 rooms, 30 rooms for your, uh, for your cast, right? And your price point is 5K a night. Fine. We'll arrange that you you want the permits okay the guy knows who to call in government and have all those arrangements so that you can go to you know side i think the first will be in terms of the opportunities right to say look um there are festivals and there are festivals and festivals are like you know every other organism they grow they mature and you know they, they, they evolve and so we said look we had one last year and wow, we had, you know, amazing interest. This year, it's triple the entries we got last year. 
So it's like people are looking for outlets. They're looking for opportunities to show their um, you know, works, right? And so this festival is more like a marketplace, you know, for, you know, quite a lot of people, particularly younger people, right? And you'll find out that, okay, there'll be many festivals, but people, these festivals will be tiered, right? Maybe the Lagos Film Festival might be for a certain, you know, certain categories of movies and producers will be more attracted to Lagos, right? And another set of producers will be attracted to Benin, and so on and so forth. So everybody just can't, it can't be, you know, one festival for everybody. They're different markets. So we're expecting that, okay, we're producing that alternative market. I mean, last year I was very, very thrilled seeing these young kids who are doing, you know, quite a lot of productions, TikTok, with their camera, with their phones, you know, because you just you just can't afford you know the kind of stuff and they have their own market so why can't we create a platform for them for, to be recognized and acknowledged